Our worlds are in danger. But we can still save them. Skipping the whole quick review thing and jumping right in. Guys, gals, non-binary pals. I promise I would wait to make this video, but unfortunately I'm being forced to make a public service announcement because Transformers 1 is at risk of bombing at the box office. We're in a Boy Who Cried Wolf situation because time and time again, whenever a new Transformers movie comes out, we always convince everyone to go see it and the movie ends up being complete dog shit. And now that we finally have one that is good, no one is watching it. This is peak Transformers and the best Transformers movie we've ever gotten. So please do yourself and us, the TF fans, a favor and go watch it if you haven't already. And if you already have, go watch it again. Seriously, that's how good this movie is. If Hideo motherfucking Kojima liked it, then you know it's good. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try to put on my best moist critical impression that I can for this. Because, let me tell you, this movie is so jam-packed with characters that it's like the Transformers version of fucking Where's Waldo. To where you actually need to watch this multiple times to spot certain characters, and you'd probably still miss them. Okay, that's enough of that, because I don't want to piss them off. But just like every Transformers movie before it, it is a spectacle. It has amazing visuals, but that's just about the only thing it shares with the previous movies, other than them all being about Transformers, because this movie actually has characters with depth to them. They do an amazing job at betraying their emotions and making the bots feel like they're actual living beings and not just murderous robots. They actually have goals and motives and actually work towards achieving them. I know the first trailer kind of turned a lot of people away from this movie because it made it seem like this was going to be a kid's movie with a lot of fart jokes. And while it does have jokes, all of the jokes seem to stick. And they're not too cringy. There's a lot of inside jokes to where if you're already a Transformers fan, you'll definitely get a chuckle out of, but none of the jokes seem to cringe, which is a good thing. But no one in this movie feels like a one-note character except for the main villain, which is actually a good thing because we're so oversaturated with villains who just have to have a tragic or sympathetic backstory to where when we finally do get a guy who's evil just for the sake of being evil, it feels refreshing. And let me tell you, this guy is evil. There have been times where I've said to myself, okay, surely he can't get any worse. And then boom, I'm hit with another bombshell revealing that he is that bad and even more despicable than I thought. And it makes me love him even more. Dare I say, I actually got very strong handsome Jack vibes from him. He's a pompous asshole with a god complex who pretends not to be evil behind the loosest hell curtain ever and openly mocks everyone he comes into contact with in the most condescendingly way possible. And you can't just help but love him for it. He's the best kind of asshole. But the movie even touches on and establishes some of the more obscure things that you'd only really know about if you're already a fan like the Quintessons. An alien race other than the Transformers themselves who are constantly depicted as one of their oldest enemies. And the best thing about this movie is that it's an origin story. You don't have to know anything about Transformers because the movie tells you and explains everything. It explains how Optimus Prime became Optimus Prime. It tells you how Megatron became Megatron. It tells you how the Autobots and Decepticons were formed and how the war got started. And most impressively, despite knowing that Optimus and Megatron are mortal enemies and you know that they eventually have a falling out with each other, they make you care about their friendship and it actually made a lot of people in my theater cry. So needless to say, this is also the most emotional Transformers movie we've ever gotten. Because when grown people my age who know about Transformers and know that Megatron and Optimus have been wanting to kill each other since their conception, cried when, let's call it, their breakup happened. You know they did a good job making you care about the characters. But I've danced around it for long enough. Now it's time to rip the band-aid off. So if you don't want the movie to be spoiled, then click off the video and come back after you've seen it. Still here? Good. Let's talk about Sentinel Prime. If you're a longtime Transformers fan, then you'd know by now that no matter which continuity he's in, he's always an asshole. And I expected that going into this movie, and to no one's surprise, we got exactly that. 
Sentinel is just as much of a lovable prick as ever in this movie, and you love to see it. What I didn't expect was how freaking evil he was. I won't lie, you can smell the Sentinel betrayal from miles away because A, Dark of the Moon plotline, and B, it's Sentinel Prime. Who else would you expect? But I didn't expect them to be so vicious and bloodthirsty. He doesn't just lead the Quintessons to the Prime's hideout, but he one by one executes them all and even takes Megatronus's TCOG, which is revealed later in the movie, and gloats about it. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier when I said that he couldn't possibly get any worse, but oh boy. He always somehow found a way to be even more despicable with each bombshell. As if selling out your entire planet to your biggest enemy and collecting your dead brethren's parts like trophies wasn't insane enough, he's responsible for all of the minor Transformers to be missing their TCOGs that allows them to transform, essentially enslaving them and gaslighting them into thinking they were born that way. <laughs> like, holy shit. You think Megatron's evil? This man is so bad he would make Unicron blush. He's the reason why Megatron even becomes Megatron. When you're the reason one of the most unforgiving, war-thirsty, tyrannical killing machines gets to how they are, then you know you are one bad motherfucker. Oh yeah, that's a scene too. He literally brands D-16 with the Decepticon emblem before trying to publicly execute him. Which is why it's so satisfying when D-16 finally succumbs to his anger and turns into Megatron and kills Sentinel the same way Bayverse Megatron kills Jazz in a 2007 movie. Now something I do want to talk about is that people complain that his betrayal towards Orion is really sudden, but I don't think so at all. It's the scene where he says, I'm done saving you and let's go of him, and that made my whole theater cry. The only thing I probably would have added was a single extra line where D-16 rants about how he feels like Orion constantly gets him into trouble and continuously ruins his life to where he resents him and feels betrayed by his own best friend. I feel like that would have helped give a little exposition before dropping him, but honestly, it doesn't even need it. They still managed to do a good job showing his descent into madness, and when he yells that he wanted to kill Sentinel, you really felt that. His voice actor did a fantastic job at conveying that anger, and when he delivered that line, the whole theater went silent. This is also by far my favorite portrayal of the Quintessons, even though the Quintesson judge isn't even in it. They feel menacing. They actually pose a threat because they show up and kill the 13 Primes and threaten to kill the rest of the planet if Sentinel doesn't hold up his end of the deal and supply them with Energon. And some of you guys might not even notice, but this is actually the exact same plotline from the Transformers Reactivate game that is in development hell. I'm very curious as to what they would do with the Quintessons going forward, and I feel like they'll play a much bigger role if we ever get a Transformers 2. I typically don't really write scripts for these, but since this movie was so packed and has so much to talk about, I kinda needed one just so I can make sure I cover everything important. And even more stuff that I could spend all day talking about, but I don't want this video to be insanely long because after all, this is supposed to be a quick review video. So please, for one last time, go see this movie. Tell your friends to go see it. Tell whoever to go see it. We need to save this movie. Subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.